people need to learn how to use those public access television because you get them for free. Don't know how to say it other than that if I had not had access to that power, if I had not had the protection of that power, they, they SWAT team, my wife and I, they bulldozed our house. They were looking for an excuse to kill me. They wanted me out of the way because I was a thorn in their side. I read that Constitution and that Bill of Rights and I knew what it was supposed to do. And I'm here to tell you tonight that that Constitution is being beat up and knocked down and drugged through the mud and the dirt. Back in the early 70s, there was a court trial out in California. It was a tax case. The defendant was trying to use the Constitution as part of his defense. The prosecuting attorney, an assistant U.S. attorney, took a copy of the Constitution and threw it on, threw it on the floor in the courtroom and said, this is what, and he stomped on it, he says, this is what I think of your Constitution. The jury sat there and didn't do anything. You all seen this on the news about this fellow Wilson back there, the congressman from North Carolina someplace. <clears throat> we were listening to a talk show on the radio as we came up the, the uh, Columbia River Gorge yesterday morning, coming from Portland up Portland up this way. And they were talking about how should that tennis player, Williams, should she apologize for her outburst at the, at the tennis matches. And they were talking about separate Congressman Rep, uh, Wilson. Should he apologize on the floor of the House? No. And I listened to all of that, and I listened to the calls coming in. And the farther we went, I, I just become more disturbed as we went along. Out of 535 congressmen and senators there, I'm sure there was a couple missing, missing in action or something. But anyway, he was the only one that performed the way he was supposed to. Because, you see, rather than them all demanding that he apologize, the first thing they should have done is examine the record, and if he was correct, in calling Obama a liar, then Obama should be put on the spot and he should apologize to the United States, the people of this country. <laughs> you and I deserve apologies from some of these people because we're going to talk about separation of powers. It's not there anymore. It's gone. And we had that one congressman that spoke up and said, you're a liar. He was a check. That's what the separation of powers is all about, isn't it? You're supposed to be a check. If you're a congressman, you're supposed to be a check against the president and the executive branch of government. He's supposed to be a check against the judiciary. And only one out of 535. Do you know why that is? They all got an education in the same kind of schools that you and I did. I'm going to start here with this monster. I'm sure that there's people here that remember seeing this critter on my television as far back as 1979, because that's when I started using this beast right here. Now, this black leopard represents government. And it looks pretty vicious. And as long as he's free, he's going to be vicious and he's going to be dangerous. And today, our government is free. And we are bound. We're involved in a slavery situation, unless you didn't know that, but we're in a slave situation, and 
this is what we have to do is turn it around because here we are at the bottom. We're down here at the bottom and, and that critter is out here amongst us. And when we get done here this evening, we're going to have bars on that cage and we're going to have that critter locked in. And you're going to know how to do it. <laughs> Until I get that done, I'll leave this right here. Now, we went to that government school. They taught us that if our Congress who represents us, if they don't represent us, if they represent somebody else, that we're supposed to campaign and we're supposed to get somebody to run that we can approve of and uh, go to the polls and throw the bomb out and put another bomb in. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened, didn't it? Over and over again. And we walk out of the polling place and we're just absolutely powerless. Now, our elections, they don't do the job. Our elections don't contain that monster. Your vote on election day isn't worth due cents today because they're manipulating. We had vote fraud in this state in 1988. We could have showed those people in Chicago how to do it. It was that bad. I mean, it was really, really bad. And so, you know, we've got all these people that aren't even registered to vote. And the media and the politicians, they tell us, they say, well, it's apathy. Apathy, my foot. It's disgust. It's frustration. Because their vote doesn't mean nothing. You're going to get the candidates the media pick for you. Now, I mentioned the fraud of the 16th Amendment. Our Constitution isn't worth anything today because of the income tax and the IRS in this country, and you've never heard anybody say that before. But I'm saying it right now because you're going to know it's the fact when I explain it to you. When they put that seizure sign on my gatepost after we ran that television special, they were trying to intimidate me. They were trying to stop me from speaking, which is a right secured by the First Amendment to our Constitution. The first, the first article of the Bill of Rights secures my right to speak freely. They tried to destroy that. They tried to punish me. They tried to steal my land. My property, my home. Because I had exercised my First Amendment right to free speech. They shut down radio stations. We had a 50,000 watt free, uh, free channel station in this country. They were saying that the, the, it was a mostly talk radio. And most of the talk show hosts were leaning on the IRS pretty heavy on their talk shows. And the big shot from the IRS came out and told the manager of that station, says, I want you to call a meeting and get all your employees here because I want to talk to them. Because I remember there was about 40 employees. They came and they sat there and that guy says, you will tone it down, you will quit bad mouthing the IRS, or we'll audit every single one of you. Now, do you understand why our press is so bad? They're a bunch of cowards. The big talking heads on NBC, CBS, and ABC. Millions of dollars. It took millions of dollars to buy their moral principles or moral standards. And now they're putting out this propaganda and people are eating it up. Why? 